I'm Jim Cropfield. The Miss Budweiser is ready, and I'm shooting for win number two. I'm Scott Pierce, driver of the Jet Presents Mr. Pringles. The Pringles is back from the Detroit accident. We are ready to defend our 1988 Governor's Cup Championship and win the second race of 1989 for the Pringles team. I'm Chip Hanauer, and our boat hasn't blown over this year, so we're very prepared to attempt to become the first two-time winner in 1989. Will it be one of these three drivers to win their second race of the year, or will this one... Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Hendrick, along with Dick Crippen, on a very misty day. I guess you could call it a Madison mist, Dick, and we have a threat of thunder showers. Hope we get this one in. Yeah, I think that's what they're worried about most is thunder and lightning. As far as the light rain that's falling right now, it's certainly uh, workable. The boats have been out on the course all the morning, and they have been testing and qualifying and getting all set for the race, so the little bit of rain won't hurt. A lot might. Miss Budweiser back after that accident in Detroit. That's right. I talked to Bernie a little yesterday, and the Budweiser had gone out and qualified at a new record for this new two-mile course at 135.6. Circus Circus right behind her at 135.1. Bernie was a little surprised at the amount of damage that had been done internally to the Miss Budweiser up in Detroit in that flip, but they were able to get it fixed, and obviously it's running very well. The Miss Budweiser in Detroit hit high altitude instead of the high hopes that you have now on the Madison uh, regatta. Uh, you're right. Uh, we did get awful high. In fact, that's the highest I've ever seen an unlimited get, but came down backwards and uh, we did the least amount of damage that we've done uh, lately. Let's put it that way. Bernie, talk to me about what happened in that flip uh, when you were out there with the Musk Budweiser in Detroit. Well, uh, Jim won the second heat uh, going away and uh, we told him how much power he had and what he could do and uh, uh, we have a computer in the boat, as you know, and uh, it's waterproof. When it come back in, we take it out and put it in the disc and, uh, and read it out. He's doing 190 mile an hour, and he was pulling away from him. And uh, when you power with Exxon, uh, you just got all that power. We got to use it. So anyhow, seriously, uh, uh, he had a lot of speed on him, and uh, it just got it hit three rollers, and it just it hung there a long time. It didn't want to go. And... Uh, uh, but since then, we've uh, done some modifications uh, to the boat. We've made some advancements uh, out of the cruise missile. Uh, we have a little part in here now that's supposed to stabilize the boat, and, and it reacts much faster than any human brain can react. And if a boat gets out of attitude, it's supposed to put it back on the water. All right, Dick, let's take a closer look at the blockbuster video weather conditions. Well, we already commented that it's light rain, 80% uh, chance of thunder showers, temperature right up there in the mid-70s, high humidity at 92%, light winds 5 to 10 miles an hour. A little different course over the last 38 years. They started the Unlimiteds here in 1951. In fact, Lee Shanoff was the first man to drive on Unlimited. He's our deputy commissioner. He was noting now they've cut this down to a two-mile course, a very, very tight first turn. That's right, and not only tight, but there's a sandbar in that first turn, and it's been causing some wave action out there that's a little bit unique for these boats, and we've seen them slap down hard. So when you get two, three, or four of them side by side in that turn, we're going to have to watch the driving very carefully. Lots of action coming up, and you'll see it in just a moment after this timeout. I'm Dick Crippen, welcoming you back to Madison, Indiana, where the light rain is falling on the banks of the Ohio. Let's go to the pit and Jim Hendrick. We've heard many a driver say, I owe it all to my crew, and it's never been more truer than the case of the Jeff Presents, Mr. Pringle. Crew Chief Danny High, after the flip in Detroit, how many man hours, how long did it take you to repair? Oh, boy, I don't know. He didn't sit around and count them, but it was a ton of time. We had figured prior to Evansville being postponed that we had only a week to do it, and we would have made it. It would have been really tough, but... But we had major damage on the canopy, obviously, and uh, the sponson tip was uh, pretty severely damaged. But uh, once we got into it, things went pretty fast. So we put a few hours in, but uh, we had no problem fixing it. Scotty, not only the ankle was injured in that Detroit accident, you now it's your knee. Yeah, it's true, Jim. Um, we have some damage in the uh, ligaments in the knee, which we were well aware of once we got back to Seattle from Detroit. And uh, we chose not to do any surgery at this point. Uh, we're waiting to for the end of the season, and then hopefully we'll reevaluate at that point. In the meantime, it's going to be a little tough the rest of the season. I just got to keep it iced down, and the doctor's going to keep pulling fluid off it, and that's what's going to happen. I understand this all happened because the bottom escape hatch came off in the accident. Well, it did, as you recall, in the accident. It hit so hard upside down uh, that it raked the canopy, and the water actually came through a, a small hole in the canopy and blew the door off, and it would have flopped over right side up. Uh, the water came through, and it's hydraulic my whole leg, so... 
Um, I guess I'm better off than Danny Sullivan. At least it's a leg, not an arm. I'd be in real trouble if it was an arm. Certainly one of the stories that we'll be watching here at Madison, Indiana. The hometown boat leads the field in Heat 1A. Holtz at Miss Madison. Mike Hansen, the driver. Circus Circus, the turbine boat. Chip Hanauer will be behind the wheel of that one. Sun Deck, Ron Snyder will be driving that. Oh boy, Oberto, and the driver there, George Woods Jr. And rounding out the field, Cairo Choice, the Cooper's Express boat, Mitch Evans will be driving. As they come off of corner number four, under the Ohio River Bridge, down to the start here in Madison, Indiana, only two boats look like they're going to be anywhere near on time for the start. Circus, circus on the inside. On the outside, it's Oh Boy Oberto as they take the start of Heat 1A. Circus Circus taking advantage of all that turbine power, powering hard into corner number one of turn number one. Watch the attitude of the boat as he comes out of it. We've had problem in the second corner. There it is. It looked like he hit a little bit of wave action out there, and it looks like that is going to be a problem area through the afternoon. We already had some trouble in the qualifications. Yes, and we've had trouble on this course at that very spot in years past also. Here's your second place boat. Oh, boy, Alberto, George Woods Jr., about three boat lengths off the pace here on lap number one while Ron Snyder in the Miss Sun Deck and Mitch Evans in the Cairo Choice just going into turn number one now as our leader comes into corner numbers three and four to come around to complete lap number one. Circus, circus, Chip Hanauer getting a very, well, I can't say smooth ride, but an easy ride. Just a little bit over 113 miles an hour, which certainly is a slow lap for him. But I think what he's doing out there now is trying to learn the river a little bit because, as we say, it was rough coming in. And then as you get the boats going around, it roughens up more. Here's a boat that just plain didn't make it on the river today anyway. Not so far. The U-9 Sundeck, Ron Snyder, who knows this river well because he has raced it many, many times. There's your official time from our Zenith Data Systems. Holtz at Miss Madison is riding in third place now. This boat owned by the residents and citizens of Madison, Indiana, some 13,000 strong. And this is the first time they've ever seen this boat operate. It came on the circuit Tri-Cities last year at replacing the old Miss Madison. These fans are getting their first look at a cab over designed Miss Madison. And they're getting a good look at the wild riding circus circus boat. Chip Hanauer at just over 112 miles an hour for his second lap. He is doing a good job of handling the boat, and again, he comes into that turn that can give him some problems. He backs off it a bit. There you can see some waves breaking over the bow of the Holsip Miss Madison again, and again, Holsip Miss Madison starts getting a little bit light down the front straight. Starts to search. If you look at the front end, goes left and right, then starts bouncing from one sponsor to the other sponsor while the tail drags in the water. Here's Cairo Choice, Mitch Evans. He is a gentleman that knows this river well also. He's driven it many, many times. He's riding in fourth place right now. They're still trying to get the kinks worked out of this boat, but it's getting better and better each race. Now remember, this Madison format is only three laps, and they'll race an extra heat to get into the finals. We'll have 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, and 3B. These are called three-lap sprints to qualify for the final. So Circus Circus coming across for that checkered flag right now. Chip Hanauer takes the win in Heat 1A. That's got to be a bit of a relief for him. They've been working hard on that boat, and that's another one that's been getting better and better. Second place goes to Oh Boy Oberto, one of the piston-powered boats. Coming in third place will be the hometown entry, Holson Miss Madison, Mike Hansen, driver of that boat. Now let's look at the results of Heat 1A. Circus Circus first, Oh Boy Oberto second. Followed by Miss Madison, Cairo Choice, the sun deck did not finish. Let's go to the pits and Dick Crippen. Dick? Okay, Chip, not a particularly tough race for you, but how was the water? It's terrible. Uh, I think it's the worst racing water I've seen in a lot of years. We were a little concerned about uh, this turn down to our behind us right here. How was that first turn going in? It's just terrible. Uh, and I expected that today because it's been that way all week. But I didn't expect the roughness everywhere else on the race course. The back straightaway is really bad as well. We'll have more for the Budweiser Indiana Governor's Cup, the fourth stop of the HFC American Hydroplane Series after this timeout. Jim Hendrick along with Dick Crippen back here in Madison, Indiana, where they've shortened the course by a half a mile, and there are pros and cons. Well, I like the half a mile. Uh, they moved the turns one and two over towards the Kentucky shore a little further, which... Uh, it used to be at the exit pin uh, of turn two last year, 
there was a, a rough spot. Now that they moved the course over, it's right in the middle of the turn, so it's making it kind of bad about halfway through that turn. It, it really gets chewed up over there. Um, I understand there's a sandbar, and it, it gets, uh, oh, there's some two or three foot uh, rollers over there, and it, it makes it kind of rough getting through that turn. Well, the field is set. They're in the water. The crews are standing by for the start of Heat 1B. Let's go to the starting lineup, Stick. All right, starting it out, it will be the Miss Budweiser. You just met Jim Cropfeld, who's the driver of that boat. The owner, of course, Bernie Little. Bill Worcester owns the Mr. Pringles. Scott Pierce will be driving that boat. Winston Eagle is owned by Steve Wilmer. Larry Lauterback is the driver. Bill Worcester, the owner of Miss Risley's. Todd Yarling piloting the boat for him. And Bob Fendler owns the Speed Sports Limited boat called Easter Seals for this race. The co-owner is the driver, Steve David. As they come under the bridge for the start, very slowly in lane one is Jim Cropfield and Miss Budweiser. Up the middle comes the Winston Eagle with the Pringles on the outside trailing. It looks like Larry Lauterback is going to hit that start right on the money, Dick. He certainly does. Nose on the line as the final second ticks off on the clock. And Winston Eagle, Larry Lauterback, is in the lead. They like to say that Winston Eagle is screaming. And right at this moment, that boat certainly is. Budweiser on the inside. Jimmy Cropfeld coming up in its nose to nose as they come out of corner number two. Down the back straight away, it is going to be Jimmy Cropfeld in the Miss Budweiser taking over the lead. Well, he got off to a late stop and come up on the inside and lane number one stuck inside as he goes under the bridge down to corner number three. Look at Larry Lauterback and the Winston Eagle. They're side by side. Whoa, here comes Pringles. Pringles fighting hard. Now they're battling for second place as they both dropped off it a little bit. The inside boat taking the advantage. Miss Budweiser now opening that gap up just a little bit more. Larry Lauterback in second place on the inside. On the outside, it's Jim presents Mr. Pringles. And that's Scott Pierce, just over 127 miles per hour for Jim Cropfeld. And again, he started just a little bit off the pace. He gets into a traffic jam, and then he puts his foot down and leaves them behind. We've got a tremendous battle going on here in lap number two of three as they go down the back chute. Here's your battle, and Mr. Pringles has taken over second place. Scotty Pierce in lane two, and trailing in the red boat is the Winston Eagle, now in lane number one, but in position number three. And we remind everybody that Scott Pierce is the gentleman you met earlier who had the ice on his knee, and he's got a brace on there so that he can operate the boat after that accident in Detroit. But the boat is operating beautifully for him now. He went way wide on that last turn, and now as he comes out of it, the inside boat is catching him, and it's neck and neck again for second. Still out in front with nobody really challenging that at this point. The turbine-powered Miss Budweiser boat. There's Jip Presents, Mr. Pringles in second place, but just barely by a nose. Winston Eagle challenging on the inside. Larry Lauterback doing a masterful job of driving that boat. We have completed lap number two of three, 125 plus mile an hour for the lead boat, Miss Budweiser. Here's the Risleys. Miss Risleys driven by Todd Yelling, currently running in fourth place. And the Miss Easter Seals having problems and is down in the water now and does not finish. Well, they had trouble with engines all this morning as they were trying to get the boat finished up for qualifying. And there they barely get into the field and the engine goes dead. Here's your winner. No problem with the engine there. That's the red and white Miss Budweiser boat. And look at this battle for second place now on the inside to the right of your screen. It's Larry Lauterback. You saw the checkered flag just come across the corner of your screen. Who's going to take it? Larry Lauterback does it to Winston Eagle. Jip presents Mr. Pringles. Scott Pierce takes third place. A good drive for Jim Cropfell to use it to learn more about it. Here's the way they finish up. Miss Budweiser, Winston Eagle second, Mr. Pringles third, Miss Risley's fourth, and Easter Seals did not finish. Let's go to the pits. Chip Hanauer said that this is the worst time, worst course he's seen in a, <laughs> a few years. Do you uh, coincide with that? Yeah, I think so. It's really rough out there. There's a lot of rollers, and, you know, the river's up here in Madison, and uh, I don't know how far above flood stage, but there's a lot of current, and it causes a lot of problems down in the uh, first turn down there, and now the straightaways are really rough, so it's going to be uh, really rough and tough out there. I guess the guy who wants is going to have to go out and get it today, Bernie. 127 mile an hour that first lap. Yeah, for him. That, that was a fast lap, and in fact, I was hollering at Lauren to slow him down, uh, you know, but if you're going to win, well, you've got to be there, and he was there. And you saw him uh, pull him going down that chute. So, Miss Budweiser's up for it today, and I think Jim is too. When we come back to Madison, Indiana, you'll find out what the best dressed drivers are wearing on the course this year.
It's time for our Zenith Performance Corner as we continue with more racing here from Madison, Indiana. You look at the banks out there and a lot of the folks wondering how these drivers dress. Jim Hendrick wondered too. Every race we take an inside look at unlimited hydroplane racing, we've talked about the boats, the engines, the hardware. The closest thing to a driver is his suit, and it's a big safety factor. George Woods Jr., driver of Old Boy Alberto. George, you actually have a certain method that you get ready to get into the cockpit when you dress. Yes, this is correct, Jim. First, we go on with a fire retardant sock. I use a soft sole shoe. Some of the guys prefer a hard sole shoe. I like the soft sole, personally. Then we go on with a cool suit underneath the main fire suit, which is next. Then on top of the fire suit, we go with a life jacket, which is our flotation support, in case we do up in the, in the water. Then uh, after that, we go on with a helmet. And under the helmet, some of the guys are using a fire retardant sock. I prefer not to. Then also, we go on with the last thing, which is our breathing system, which is a compressed air breathing system, and then our fire retardant gloves. And if you could read his lips, he's saying, Hi, Mom. 